Welcome to Taking Stock. I'm Amanda Lang. Coming up on the show, pointing the finger on inflation at government and at the central bank. And housing and overall affordability take center stage at a federal cabinet retreat. Plus, how AI might change the balance of power in the world. That's all ahead. First, for the week that was in business, it's time for the briefs. Wildfires continue to burn in Canada this week. All 20,000 residents of the city of Yellowknife evacuated to escape wildfires, while some residents of Kelowna, B.C. remain displaced as firefighters battle a blaze that has destroyed homes and thousands of hectares of woodland. We still are firefighting in uh, many of these neighborhoods. We're chasing down hotspots, we're dealing with smoke and what could potentially be flames and, and even larger issues. Retail sales in Canada rose slightly in June, but excluding gasoline and autos actually fell in the month. That weakness could be enough for the Bank of Canada to resist raising rates on September 7th. That may depend on next week's read of overall economic growth for the second quarter, which most economists expect to be below average. The Prime Minister gathered his cabinet for a three-day retreat this week, focused on issues of affordability, including housing and inflation. The meeting in Prince Edward Island comes on the heels of a big shakeup of the cabinet and at a time of growing pressure on the government to tackle the cost of living. The province of Ontario launched a three-year, $1.2 billion fund aimed at rewarding municipalities which hit housing targets. The Building Faster Fund offers new annual funding to cities on target to achieve 80% of their goal of new homes built. The province is also expanding the so-called strong mayor powers to more municipalities in order to speed up construction approvals. Canada's two largest banks reported diverging results for the recent quarter and signaled that costs will be a focus. Royal Bank saw profit and revenue rise and said headcount will be cut by up to 2%. TD Bank missed expectations for profit and set aside more capital for bad loans. Canada's housing minister said one option to curb rising home prices could be to cap the number of foreign students allowed into Canada. Sean Fraser said the short-term program is putting undue pressure on housing in some cities. There were 800,000 foreign students in Canada in 2022, up from 275,000 a decade earlier. And those are your business briefs. Central banks are walking a fine line between making sure inflation cools and not chilling their economies while making life more expensive for many in the process. Ian Lee is an associate prof at the Sprott School of Business at Carleton University. Ian, great to have you with us. It's my great pleasure, Amanda. So let's just start with whether you think the bank has got it right so far. There are signs that inflation is cooling. One of the biggest components, of course, of high prices right now are mortgage interest costs, which is thank you, bank. Uh, are we in the right place, though? Have we? Have, has the bank done the right thing on inflation? Uh, I do think they, they are going in the right direction. And before anyone thinks that I'm cheerleading for the Bank of Canada, I was extremely critical of the Bank of Canada during the from the beginning of the pandemic when they drove interest rates, in my view, down to far, far, far too low levels. Hmm. Mohammed Al Arian made similar arguments, completely unsustainable, a quarter of one point, a half of a percentage point. And it inevitably unleashed or at least exacerbated uh, the uh, inflation genie. Hmm. And they kept them too, drove them too low and kept them too low for too long. Having said that, they belatedly and correctly publicly acknowledge their mistake. And they have, as we know, they've driven up interest rates very rapidly. Yep. It is working. And and rates, as we've seen, have come down from the, uh, the mid eights down to the low threes. So they are going in the right direction. And so that, that gets us to, uh, are they done? Uh, and we did, of course, see uh, inflation did tick the wrong way, Ian, but most of the underlying measures show inflation is cooling pretty nicely. Uh, should the bank stop here or is there one more rate hike in our future, in your view? I think there's one more rate hike. And, and very quickly, Amanda, I was a mortgage manager in the late 70s at Bank of Montreal, main office branch, Ottawa, uh, fourth largest branch at the time in Canada. I lent millions and millions of dollars. For those critics across Canada who say that, well, those are different times and interest rates don't work to cure inflation, this reveals a fundamental misunderstanding about arithmetic and subtraction. So when you raise the interest rates, the central bank is taking money out of people's pockets and out of business pockets because of the revolving lines of credits that every organization has, profit-making and non-profit, like a university. They have less money to grant wage increases. 
Individual consumers have less money to go to restaurants and do renovations and buy a car. It most certainly cools the economy. 1980, they drove it into a rip-roaring recession, the worst since the Great Depression. Right. Raising interest rates works. So now the question is, have they gone too far or gone enough? I think probably one more a turn, one more increase of a quarter point, partly because interest rate, the, the whole uh, uh, game of inflation expectations is a game of psychology. Right. And they have to convince us, we the people, that they're serious. Okay, we've got 30 seconds for this, Ian, but do we see a recession? The bank is actually pretty optimistic that it's going to manage to avoid a recession. What's your thought? Uh, that's my view, too, and it's because it's very different. This is where I will acknowledge it's where, very different from the 70s. Yeah. Throughout the 70s through today until roughly 2020, we had way too many. I tell my students we had way too many workers um, and 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 we had a surplus of labor. We mm -hmm. had high unemployment. And, and so recessions would see unemployment go through the roof. We're no longer in that boomer era from right. 70, 1970 to 2020. We're in the era of, of labor shortages as far as the eye can see. That changes everything. And so even if we did tip into a very slow growth minus you know two tenths of 1% or something, I think in businesses are going to respond very differently because they're going to protect their valuable workers. They're yeah. not gonna make the mistake they did in the pandemic of laying them off because it's too costly. So I think we're not going to have a recession partly because of the robustness of the United States and partly because of the serious job shortages in Canada. Ian, so good to have your thoughts. Appreciate your time today. My pleasure, Amanda, thank you. Ian Lee, Associate Prof at the Sprott School of Business at Carleton University. Coming up, a cabinet retreat this week focused on inflation and housing affordability. We will take a closer look next.